I'd like to uh, call to order this uh, public meeting of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York. Uh, I would like to announce that we will be going into executive session to discuss personnel matters after we consider the first two items on the public meeting agenda. We will then reconvene in public session after the uh, executive session. Now I would like to read the following notice into the record. The meetings of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York are open to the public and the Board welcomes the interest of those who attend. The public has ample opportunity to communicate with the Board. Public hearings on the Board's policy calendar are scheduled one week prior to the Board's regular meetings and meetings of the public who wish to communicate with the Board are invited to express their views at such public hearings. Furthermore, the board holds pu additional public hearings uh, each year in each of the five boroughs at which members of the public may also speak. In addition, written communications to the board are routinely distributed to all trustees. The board must carry out the functions assigned to it by law and therefore cannot tolerate conduct by members of the public that disrupts its meetings. In the event of uh, disruptions, including noise, which interferes with board discussion after appropriate warning, I will ask the security staff to remove persons uh, engaging in disruptive conduct. Uh, may I now request that everyone take a moment to mute your cell phones or, or Blackberries. Thank you very much. As usual, CUNY TV is transmitting uh, the public sessions of this afternoon's uh, meeting of the Board of Trustees live on cable channel 75. This meeting is also being webcast live and can be accessed by going to www.cuny.edu. The public session of this board meeting will also be available as a podcast within 24 hours and will be available on the CUNY website. Uh, this is our first meeting since Chancellor Matthew Goldstein announced uh, his intention to step down early this summer. Our Chancellor began this journey with many of us 14 years ago at a time when my task force report I think accurately described CUNY as an institution adrift. Although he began the job with both a distinguished academic and administrative record, I think few of us could have imagined at that time that he would accomplish so much in so many ways that have lifted CUNY beyond our uh, highest expectations. I have said on several occasions that he is the finest public higher education chancellor uh, in the country, uh, and that is no exaggeration. I also believe it is fair to say that he is the greatest chancellor in the history of the City University. Uh, of Uh, there will be appropriate uh, times in the future to elaborate in greater detail, but suffice it to say, Matt, on behalf of all of us, that CUNY is a far better and improved uh, place because of you. We thank you for your service. Uh, on behalf of, uh, of all the members of the board, I would like to welcome Interim Chancellor Designate uh, William Kelly to this afternoon's meeting. Thank you for uh, agreeing to work with us closely uh, during this time of transition. I know you will hit the ground running uh, on uh, July 1st, uh, 2013. Before I turn to the board's regular agenda for this meeting, I want to introduce two resolutions of extraordinary importance to this university. 
Let me read out loud the resolve section and first paragraph of the explanation section of the first resolution, which is at your places around the table. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve the naming of the Colin L. Powell School for Civil and Global Leadership. The Colin, F, the Colin L. Powell School for Civic and Global Powell. Leadership is named after General Colin L. Powell, USA, the founder and chair of the Colin L. Powell Center for Leadership and Service at the City College of New York. General Powell, uh, I think CUNY's most distinguished living alumnus, alum, uh, alumnus has uh, dedicated his life in service to others. For the past decade, he has tirelessly worked to support the Colonel Powell Center for Leadership and Service to provide CCNY's students with extraordinary support and a great opportunity. May I have a second uh, to, the, to the motion? I second it. Thank you. May I call first on uh, Chancellor Matthew Goldstein? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chancellor General. Uh, you've been a friend of mine for a long time and a, a great counsel uh, to me and others in the university. Uh, you've never forgotten your roots. Uh, I believe you graduated in 57, around the time, 58. Uh, and since that year, you've been connected with the college as you have risen up the ladder of uh, a great hero and a great American and I can't think of anybody that uh, we feel more fortunate than you to name this important school. So thank you for agreeing to lend your name and uh, thank you on behalf of the City University of New York and all the future students who are gonna come and learn about your distinguished career. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. May I call on President Lisa for a few words? Thank you. Thank you, General Powell, Colin. I feel extremely privileged. I feel humbled. You are not only a true American hero and international statesman, but you are the truest, truest of sons of City College. You show that no matter what your background, no matter where you're from, you can do anything in this world. Your integrity and your friendship mean so much to me, so much to the students of City College, and I can't think of a better person. You are my hero. Thank you. Are there, are there questions or discussion uh, on the resolution? If not, uh, I'll ask for the vote now. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Abstentions. Colonel Powell uh, a School for Civic and Global Leadership uh, now exists. General, would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is indeed a great honor. I only wish my parents were still around to see this. But you know, in, in my career, I've often been asked, uh, how did you do it? How did you make it? You know, you're born in Harlem, raised in the Bronx, and uh, you were able to rise to the top of the military profession and to the top of the diplomatic profession. And what were the secrets? How did it all happen? There were two things that really did it. One, I had parents and a family that kept me in play as a kid growing up in the South Bronx. And I benefited from a public education system that brought me from kindergarten all the way through the City College of New York at no expense to me and no expense to my parents because the people of this city, the people of this state, recognize that there is no greater responsibility for any government than to educate the next generation of leaders. And so throughout my career, I have always given credit to the public school system and especially to the City College of New York 
for keeping me in play and giving me a quality education. A quality education I didn't know I was getting at the time. <laughs> and after I became a senior official in the Army, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I would visit countries around the world and I would get the question uh, often that said, well, what year did you graduate from West Point? <laughs> And I said, well, I, I didn't get into West Point. I couldn't have dreamed of applying to West Point. Well, how about some of the other great military schools that we have uh, in the southern part of our country? And I said, well, in those days, a black kid couldn't go to those schools. Well, then where did you go? And I said, City College, New York. Where's that? It's in Harlem, about a, mile, <laughs> about a mile from where I was born. And I got a great education. I got an education that was based on liberal arts. I got a bachelor of science degree. And when I went to my first posting at Fort Benning, Georgia, and I had to compete with young lieutenants from West Point, from all of the great military colleges, from Princeton, you name it, I discovered then, you know, I got a pretty good education at CCNY. <laughs> and I was able to compete, and I was able to do my very, very best. Because the other thing CCNY and the New York City Public School System taught me goes to some of the comments that were made a few moments ago. That if you believe in yourself, and if you believe in this country, and if you believe that you can achieve in this country, then go for it. Work hard, do your best, and see what happens. I entered the Army just a few years after segregation officially ended. I was part of the first generation of minority officers, black officers, uh, at the end of segregation. And what they said to me was, we don't want to hear any hard luck stories about you were born in Harlem, raised in the Bronx, immigrant parents, you were poor, all that stuff, save it for somebody else. The only thing we care about is performance. And I learned in City College of New York that performance is all that counts, and that's all I ever asked for. And so I'm deeply grateful and feel so indebted to this city and to the taxpayers of the city for giving me such an opportunity that I can now give back to CCNY and to the city of New York in the remainder of the time that I have here. The center started out being modest. It grew. It started to affect the entire college. It started to affect other colleges. And that's when Lisa came forward with the idea of making it a school. And it's going to be a school just like the center, which is focused on the kids, focused on the students. It's not going to be putting out papers. It's not going to be doing, it's going to be focusing on these young people who are going to be the leaders of the city and the leaders of America in one generation. And we have no greater responsibility than to give these kids the best education we possibly can, just as was done for me so many years ago. When I came back to City College after I stepped down as Secretary of State to see what was going on in the center that had been named after me, I sat in a conference room with the president at that time, Greg Williams, and about 20 students were in the room, and they all told me their story, where they had come from, how they were working hard, what they wanted to be in life. And when they all went around the table and came back to me, I just thought, God, they're just like I was 50 years ago. So now I have to invest in them as others earlier had invested in me. And we have no greater obligation. So I'm deeply thankful. I thank the board for this honor. And I look forward to working with CCNY uh, in the months and years ahead. Thank you so much. General, I want to thank you on behalf of uh, everyone uh, on the board and indeed everyone at CUNY for your extraordinary dedication, your tremendous personal generosity. You contributed uh, a very substantial um, am amount of your own personal funds to the well in excess of $30 million that has been raised uh, for the support uh, of your school. Uh, so we thank you very, very much for your help in putting together that is one of the most significant gifts in the history uh, of, of the university. So thank you, sir, for that. Uh, we, uh, the second extraordinary uh, resolution that we have to take up today 
uh, calls for the establishment of the uh, Stella and Charles Gutman Community College and the Gutman Student Success and Engagement Fund. Uh, the resolution reads that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York hereby accepts a gift of $25 million from the Stella and Charles Gutman Foundation and authorizes the General Counsel to, exercise, to uh, execute the agreement setting forth both the terms and conditions of said gift. Uh, and be it further uh, resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby establishes the Gutman Student Success and Engagement Fund and the Gutman Transfer Scholarship Fund as endowments in perpetuity in accordance with the agreement. And be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York hereby renames the new community college, the Stella and Charles Gutman Community College in accordance uh, with the agreement. May I have a second? Second. Uh, may I call on the chancellor to say a few words? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. After the uh, sterling success that uh, this university achieved when we initiated the ASAP, the accelerated study of associate programs, it occurred to me that we had something quite remarkable going on uh, at this university and that we would learn more and be able to do more had we developed a new community college that would derive many of its values and ideas from ASAP. I went to my staff, uh, Mr. Chairman, and they said, oh, here he goes again. But uh, we were successful in, in getting a new community college, the first such uh, community college uh, approved by the State Education Department in 40 years. Uh, we recruited Scott Evenbeck to be our founding president. And then, uh, unbeknownst to me, there were quiet discussions going on with the Gutman Foundation. And uh, I was asked to meet with uh, uh, the president and the executive director who are here with us uh, this evening, Mr. Rubenstein and uh, Ms. Uh, Olufsen. Uh, they grilled me for a good hour and 15 minutes uh, about uh, you know, really getting into the weeds with me about uh, this campus. And uh, I can't thank the two of you for your leadership enough. Uh, in having confidence uh, in us uh, to carry uh, the name of the Gutman family uh, in perpetuity uh, in this important uh, community college. It has uh, become a, uh, the talk of the town uh, in, in the world of community colleges about what we aspire to do and how we are challenging orthodoxy with uh, innovations that were not tried before. So I thank you for your largesse, and I thank you for your confidence. And uh, we will not let you down. Uh, this community college will continue to inspire all of us, not only here at the City University of New York, but really changing public policy about the importance of this, of this asset class of higher education that I think is becoming more and more known and appreciated among all of us in higher education. May I ask President Scott Evenbeck to say a few words? I join our faculty, staff, and students in thanking the Stella and Charles Gutman Foundation for their unprecedented generosity, a gift that will provide the margin of excellence in coupling access and success in the community college. It's great to welcome and thank Ernest Rubenstein and Elizabeth Olison, whose support builds on the vision of the chancellor and the board in creating this new college. We've learned much from CUNY's other colleges and thank them for their support. And we thank John Mogulescu, Tracy Mead, and the presidents of our other community colleges who did so much in the building of this college. We will be proud to live off the legacy of Stella and Charles Gutman's commitment to the betterment of New York City as we continue to build the college in their name. 
Thank you. Uh, you have the resolution, uh, and it has been seconded. Are there questions or comments? If not, uh, we're, we'll take a vote. All in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? The uh, resolution is unanimously uh, adopted. Uh, let me take, it gives me a, a great deal of personal pleasure to uh, welcome an old friend, uh, President Ernest Rubenstein and Executive Director Elizabeth Olofsson. Uh, President Rubenstein, would you care to say a few words? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this is more than I bargained for. Uh, I want to start by thanking Elizabeth, uh, who spent two years uh, leading our due diligence effort, uh, interviewing just about every organization that deals with college education in the city of New York, every organization that tries to help poor kids get into, remain in, and succeed at college. She has done a fantastic job, and when you study the components of this gift, which is not a simple one. There are three separate pieces, but they all fit together beautifully. Uh, you'll see what a marvelous job Elizabeth did in crafting this. Uh, we ended up in a place which is about 180 degrees from where we started. Uh, when I first thought of devoting a good part of the uh, foundation's endowment, uh, it ended up at 50%. I would have gone for 100% personally, but I only had one vote. Uh, uh, I was looking at the extreme right end of the bell curve and to try to find those poor kids who had enormous talent uh, and whose career should be subsidized. But the more we study this, the more I realized those kids are going to get into the top colleges anyway. There's loads of, of, of money available for their scholarships. and. Uh, I started to worry about the kids at the other end of the bell curve. And then I heard a speech of the New York Historical Society by Neil Ferguson last year, the noted historian, now at Harvard. And someone asked him, uh, Professor Ferguson, aren't you concerned about the enormous disparities of wealth in this country? The disparity is getting worse, not better. And he said, that doesn't worry me as much as the need to ensure that the latter or escalator for social and economic elevation remains available to poor kids. That's what's important, because if you don't have that, then you're sowing the seeds of an, a society that will be less stable, perhaps, in future years. So we ended up where we did. I'm delighted. Uh, I think the Gutmans, how they lived, uh, if they were alive, would be delighted. and. Uh, one reason this is terribly important to me is the Gutmans died without children. They don't have a family. Uh, and I always felt that the foundation was, its, was their DNA, and it was our obligation to preserve their name associated with good deeds. And uh, I think CUNY will be around 50 and 100 years from now, as will its colleges, and they will continue to carry the Gutman name, and that's enormously important to me. So uh, on the theory that it's better to give than to receive, Elizabeth and I are happier than you folks are, uh, <laughs> uh, and we're just delighted to be here and so happy that you found this proposal acceptable. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank our distinguished guests for uh, attending uh, the first part of our, of our public uh, meeting uh, this evening, uh, and we're very grateful to you for your many, many, many gifts and, and uh, that you've bestowed on the university. I'd like now to adjourn the public meeting to go into executive session regarding personnel matters uh, because several trustees have to leave early tonight. So we're taking it up uh, earlier than usual.
Uh, this uh, public hearing of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York uh, is hereby uh, reconvened. I have a few announcements. I'm delighted to announce that Kingsbury, Kingsborough Community College was named one of the top four community colleges who re which received the Aspen Prize for Community College Excellence. Kingsboro was chosen from a pool of over 1,000 participating colleges nationwide by the Aspen Institute. Congratulations to President Perugi and the entire <laughs> a Congratulations to Trustee Rita DiMartino, who was conferred uh, an, uh, in, an international award as diplomat, civil society leader, and corporate executive by Dialogue on Diversity on March 20th. This award recognized her excellence in statesmanship and philanthropy, advancing the causes of women in education and international scholarly exchange and in healthcare uh, in its global uh, dimensions. Uh, congratulations will be in order uh, for Trustee Hugo M. Morales, who has accepted recognition as a Beacon of Hope honoree. He will be honored at the National Seniors and National Services Appreciation Day event uh, on May 10th. Congratulations to Trustee Morales. Uh, I want to thank Trustee Rita DiMartino, Trustee Hugo Morales, and Trustee and University Student Senate Chair Kafui Kuaku for participating in the Somos El Futuro, El Futuro event in Albany during the weekend of March 22nd through March uh, 24th. Thank you very much. I also want to thank uh, Trustee Kathleen Pasilli for representing CUNY for the 13th year at its Big Apple Jobs Fair this past Friday. Uh, April 26th held at the Jacob Javits Conference Center. This is a great program that brings CUNY students in contact with prospective uh, employers. On behalf of the board, I would like to extend our best wishes for a speedy recovery uh, to Trustee Morales' son, Hugo, who is receiving medical care at, Jaco at Jacoby Hospital. Our thoughts uh, are with you uh, and your wife, Gladys, uh, Trustee Morales. We deeply mourn the loss of Gerald W. Lynch, former president uh, of John Jay College of Criminal Justice, who passed away on April 17th after a brief illness. Dr. Lynch was John Jay College's longest serving president from 1975, when he was named acting president, uh, then formally sworn in as president in 1977, and led the college until his retirement uh, in 2004. We are saddened by the passing of former New York State Board, Board of Regents member Joseph Bowman during the second week uh, in April after a long illness. He was a great friend of CUNY uh, who was known as a pioneer in developing access to the internet to libraries as well as underserved uh, communities. Our hearts go out to the family of President William Pollard, whose father, Mr. Linwood Pollard, passed away uh, on the morning uh, of March 6th. Uh, may I now call on, on Trustee Valerie Beale to announce college and faculty honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Baruch College MBA program jumped to number 75 from last year's number 97 and the top 100 best graduate schools of business by U U.S. News and World Report. Congratulations. <laughs> Three faculty members from Brooklyn College's Master of Fine Arts and Creative Writing program have each received coveted Guggenheim fellowships recently. They are Professor Emeritus <coughs> Lewis Askoff, Associate Professor Benjamin Lerner, and Lecturer Aaron Courtney. Congratulations. <laughs> College of Staten Island faculty member 
Sebastian Pogut received a National Science Foundation five-year grant of $1,178,046 for career structural and mechanic analysis of potassium channel mo modulation by a novel activating snake toxin <coughs> this past March. <laughs> He is the third CSI faculty member in as many years to be recognized. Daniel McCloskey received a five-year grant of $931,946 in 2012, and Vadim Agnasian received a five-year grant totaling $450,000 the previous year. Congratulations. Queens College Center for Teaching and Learning was highlighted in the Chronicle for Higher Education as part of an article on abject orientation. Queens College sociologist Sujai Tai Fernandez was recently interviewed by many media outlets about the death of Venezuela leader Hugo Chavez. And the head of Queens College's Women and Work Program was profiled as an MSNBC foot soldier last month. Congratulations to them. Hunter College Associate Professor of Art, Carrie Moyer, was chosen from among nearly 3,000 applicants to receive a 20, 2013 Guggenheim Fellowship in Painting. Hunter College School of Education Professor of Curriculum and Teaching and Coordinator of his Adolescent Social Studies Education Program, Terry Epstein, won a full bag senior, senior Scholar Award. And Hunter College Lecturer in Classical and Oriental Studies, Sue Kawasaki, Kawashami, was awarded the Consul General of Japan Commendations for 2013. Congratulations to them. City College Distinguished Research Professor Sheldon Weinbron was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. A recent conference at the college brought together more than 80 scientists from around the world to mark the 30th anniversary of the International Satellite Cloud Climatology Project. The conference was directed by Distinguished Professor of Electrical Engineering, William Rossow and Distinguished Professor of Civil Engineering, Robert Passwell, received a special New York Transportation Leaders Award from the New York chapter of the Conference of Minority Transportation Officials. Congratulations to them. And finally, Spanish language daily newspaper, El Diario, recently presented its Mujerci de Tacadas, Okay. Distinguished Woman Award to Dolly Martinez, Deputy to the President and Assistant Vice President for College Affairs at Hostess Community College of CUNY for her selfless work in the community and dedication to higher education. Among other awardees this year was another of CUNY's own, the Honorable Jenny Rivera, New York State Court of Appeals judge, congr congratulations to them. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> May I now call on Trustee Kathleen Vasili to announce student and alumni honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Five of the eight student CUNY debate team participating in the Cross-Examination Debate Association National Championships received awards. Baruch College's Christian Torre, Brooklyn College's William Chung were named National Debate Scholars. And novice first year debaters from Baruch College, Amanda Siegel and Namaya Jeffrey, advanced to the novice breakout quarterfinal round. Congratulations. Lehman College graduate Samya Anna, who is currently studying at Harvard Medical School, is one of 30 recipients of the selective Paul and Daisy Soros Fellowship for New Americans. Congratulations. Baruch College's student MFE team recently won third place at the Rothman International Trading Competition, while students from Baruch's model United Nations team won awards for outstanding position paper and outstanding delegation during the 2013 conference. Congratulations. 
Queens College graduating senior, Madeline Yap, received a Fulbright, Schol a Fulbright Fellowship to teach English in South Korea. Congratulations. Two Macaulay Honors College at Hunter College students were recently honored. Christina Navarazina received a 2013 Barry M. Goldwater Scholarship, and Anna Billingsley was selected a New York City Urban Fellow. Hunter College graduate student Megan McGrath was selected as one of the 14 American Association for the Advancement of Science, Mass Media Science and Engineering Fellows for 2013. Recent Hunter graduates, Amanda Collado, Aaron Dohler, Samuel Hickson, and Merrill Horn, and Tab Tayaba Tosif were awarded National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowships. And Mahita Alexandre was accepted to Harvard Medical School. Hunter College alumna, Vanessa Ruta, 99, a neuroscientist, won a Sloan Research Fellowship. Congratulations. Grove School of Engineering junior in chemical engineering, Ala Zamarieva, became the latest Gold War scholar from City College. Engineering majors Dane Christie and Ru Chen of the class of 2013, and, Alex, and Alexei Rudieski, Julius Edison, Arash Nawabayer, and Philip Liu of the class of 2012, all received National Science Foundation graduate fellowships. Students, Corrine Quirk, Asha Whale, and Shannon Fanukane were selected as 2013 Jeanette Watson Fellows. Congratulations. Dr. De uh, Deborah Persaud, a York College graduate, the class of 1981, is being celebrated as part of a team that may have discovered a way to functionally cure AIDS in infants. Dr. Persaud, currently a professor of infectious diseases at Johns Hopkins University of Medicine, was called upon to help study the case of a Mississippi toddler diagnosed with AIDS virus at birth and may have been cured of the disease even though the mother had suspended treatment. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, you have on the table a list of uh, grants and gifts received by the university uh, since the February 25th, 2013 uh, meeting. Uh, it's available in your calendar book. I'd like to now call on Chancellor Goldstein to present his report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Let me uh, uh, say first how uh, touched I was uh, to receive calls from all the trustees and presidents and letters and emails. Uh, I was uh, not prepared for that outpouring of uh, affection uh, and, uh, and, and really uh, I want to thank all of you for that. Uh, it means uh, much to me. Uh, when I uh, decided, uh, after having many conversations with myself, uh, that I was going to step down after 14 years, um, I uh, spoke to the chairman and uh, essentially all of the trustees and indicated that it would be my recommendation that um, Bill Kelly uh, be chosen to um, uh, be the interim chancellor, then I thought he had the stature uh, and the uh, confidence of the other presidents uh, and had done an extraordinary job uh, at the graduate school. And uh, Bill, I wish you really uh, uh, good, good, uh, and you're gonna love the job. You're gonna work hard. <laughs> You're going to work hard. Your wife is not going to see you as much, uh, but uh, you're going to do um, a wonderful job uh, as uh, interim chancellor. And I'm delighted uh, to know that you'll be in that seat and uh, look forward to working with the chairman and other members of the search committee behind the scenes and helping uh, in ways to um, identify uh, candidates for uh, uh, the permanent position. Uh, you've heard that uh, a number of our students uh, won uh, National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowships. I'm, I'm pleased to say that last year uh, we had 16 such fellowships, which by far 
was the largest number in our history. But this year, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, 24. Uh, it is the largest in the Northeast, uh, and um, it's got to be right up there uh, across the United States. I don't know if we, we know that number, but 24 is a remarkable achievement, and it is a testimony to the fact that this university is viewed in a very different way than it was just a few years ago, and that this could not have been, could not have happened with the, uh, without the leadership of our presidents attracting some extraordinary faculty that are guiding these very talented students. So I just want to uh, share that, uh, that good news uh, with all of you. I think it's something that we collect collectively ought to be deeply proud of. Uh, I, I don't have much to say about uh, the state budget. I've reported on this before, uh, but um, we now have a new budget for fiscal 2014. On the operating side for the senior colleges, the enacted budget provides a little over $36 million in additional state aid and about $60 million uh, in increased tuition revenue. In addition, uh, included in the appropriation is uh, more money for the SEEK program and the Joseph S. Murphy Institute. For the community colleges, the adopted budget increases base aid per student by $150 to $2,422. This will generate for our community colleges a little over $12 million uh, for next fiscal year. Uh, in the budget agreement, uh, ASAP was uh, given a shout out by, um, uh, by uh, the governor and supported by the legislature for $1.7 million for ASAP. In addition, there was uh, $2 million allocated for the Next Generation New York Job Linkage Program uh, the uh, legislature increases uh, child care by about $544,000. Mr. Chairman, I want to just um, thank the governor uh, in particular here uh, for giving us the opportunity to have a, a stable financial environment. I leave the university as chancellor knowing that there is great stability on a going forward basis uh, our balance sheet has probably not been as strong for some time, and our uh, giving uh, continues to be on target uh, to finish our uh, very aggressive capital campaign of about $3 um, billion. On the city side, uh, Mayor Bloomberg is expected to issue his FY 2014 executive budget proposal later this week. Uh, we have been asked to provide testimony to the City Council's Higher Education and Finance Committee on May 10th, where I will testify on behalf of uh, the university. I'd also like to thank those who testified on behalf of the university on the cost and benefits of uh, MOOCs uh, before the New York City Council Higher Education Committee uh, and uh, people who did a terrific job, uh, Ann Kirshner uh, from our Honors College, uh, George Adi of uh, Academic Affairs uh, at the uh, CUNY School of Public uh, Professional Studies, Curtis Kendrick, University Dean for Libraries and Information Resources, and uh, uh, Jen Wang, a professor at John Jay College. I'm also pleased to advise the board that we have reached an agreement finally with the PSC uh, to implement a pilot phase retirement program. This program will allow tenured faculty who have 15 years of service at CUNY and are 65 years uh, old uh, or older to work 50% uh, of their regular schedule and receive 50% of their salary and this plan will go on for um, uh, three years. 
A more limited option is available for certain members of the non-teaching and instructional staff. We were quite, quite pleased to be able to extend this benefit, which many other universities have, to our long-serving faculty. And we're hoping that our faculty will be able to fully explore their retirement options while still being active members of the teaching force at CUNY. Uh, the one who really carried this for us uh, arduously uh, was uh, our, our wonderful Vice Chancellor, Pam Silverblatt, who has a lot more patience than I do, for sure. <laughs> And uh, she did uh, really an extraordinary job. And thank you, Pam. This was a um, long time in coming, and you deserve so much of the credit. Last week, uh, I participated, as did so many people, in the launch of CUNY's 11th Citizenship Now call-in program, an unprecedented public service partnership with the Daily News that is one of the uh, now unlimited brainchilds of uh, Jay Hershenson. He just <laughs> spews out uh, very, very creative ideas. Um, and uh, this is one of his great creative ideas. Uh, I want to thank also Professor, uh, uh, to Professor Alan Warnick, who has been indefatigable uh, in his efforts to really uh, bring this program uh, to national attention. This year, this year in the last week, uh, we serviced over 13,000 people uh, through this largest call-in in the nation, and so far, about 125,000 people have been helped by the Citizenship Now call-in. So Jay, uh, I really want to thank you again for coming up with this very important, uh, you're really changing lives. Uh, in way, I think he really deserves. Uh, we have a number of searches going on, and I am committed to getting all of these done, uh, except one, uh, because we, I just gave the charge today to the uh, uh, committee that is chaired by uh, Trustee Peter Pantaleo uh, as we seek to uh, replace the uh, irreplaceable, I think, uh, Steve Shepard at the Graduate School of Journalism. Uh, Medgar Evers, uh, ably chaired by Trustee Valerie Beal. Uh, we have about 50 people who have expressed interest uh, in being the next president of Medgar Evers College. And within that pool of 50, we have some really fabulous people with uh, uh, much experience in higher education and deeply committed to the uh, unique mission uh, that Medgar Evers uh, plays. And I want to thank you, uh, uh, Valerie, for uh, the fine work uh, that you're doing. And we will make an appointment uh, at the June board meeting. Uh, Valerie and I have uh, promised uh, to make that happen. Uh, the School of Public Health uh, Committee has now uh, suggested uh, a small group of finalists uh, that are making uh, visits to the participating um, schools that make up uh, uh, the uh, School of Public Health. I want to thank Lexa Logue, who is chairing that search, and uh, our partner, Jennifer Rabb, uh, who uh, will play a very significant role, as we know, uh, going forward uh, in this very important school. Uh, the CUNY Job Apple, you heard about uh, the Job Apple Fair. This was the 25th anniversary. Uh, Trustee Pasilli, as you heard, has been there uh, as long as she's been on the board and a great help. Uh, trustee, former trustee Edith Everett, uh, was there right at the beginning. And I think this was, again, one of Jay Hershenson's uh, ideas. And so thank you again, Jay. Uh, we had uh, Labor Commissioner uh, Peter Rivera as the, um, uh, commence as the uh, speaker, uh, and he did a great job uh, really uh, thanking all of the employers who were there and greeting 
uh, the students who are leaving CUNY and, and entering the job force. And let me conclude that again, uh, CUNY TV uh, was awarded uh, more New York Emmy Awards. I don't know how, what that count is, but we may at some point need to get a new building <laughs> just to accommodate uh, all of these awards. The uh, several, several of our signature series, Nueva York, uh, Canapé, Science and You and Study with the Best were singled out for um, their, uh, their awards. Uh, and I think that, uh, that's enough, Mr. Uh, Chairman, Chairman, because my voice is about to go. All right. Are there, <clears throat> are there comments or questions for the chancellor on his report? All right. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Uh, we'll turn now to the policy items uh, requiring a vote. <clears throat> uh, first, I'll move the adoption of the Chancellor's University report for April 29th, two, two, 2013, uh, including addenda, errata, and table items. You have a copy uh, of this report on the table. May I have a second? Second. Are there questions or comments? on the university report? Mr. Chairman, I just want to note that Trustee Joe Loda has recused himself from voting on this uh, item. All right. Other comments, questions? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Uh, any abstentions? Thank you very much. I'll uh, next uh, move the approval of the minutes. Uh, of the regular board meeting and executive session of February 25th, 2013. You have a copy of the draft minutes. May I have a second? Second. second. Are there any uh, revisions uh, uh, that are needed to, to this that anyone has? All right. Uh, then all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, the minutes uh, are adopted. We'll turn now to our uh, committee reports. Uh, I'll call first on Trustee uh, Peter Pantaleo to present items from the uh, Fiscal Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on Fiscal Affairs and the Subcommittee on Investment met on April 8, uh, 2013, uh, chaired by the Vice Chair of the Fiscal Affairs Committee, uh, myself, following the approval of the minutes of the Fiscal Affairs Committee meeting of February 4th, 2013, the committee approved the following resolutions. Calendar item 3A is a resolution to, to authorize the City University of New York to adopt a schedule of academic excellence fees for students in the pre-health professions post-baccalaureate certificate program at the School of the Arts and Sciences at Hunter College, effective with the fall 2013 semester as follows. Resident full-time students, $500 per semester. Resident part-time students, $50 per credit. Non-resident full-time and part-time students, $90 per credit. The very inartfully named post-baccalaureate certificate program at the School of Arts and Sciences at Hunter Colleges, College is a highly competitive program which challenges students to rigorous coursework in the sciences and mathematics to prepare them for applying to doctoral programs in the health professions. The revenue generated from these fees will add to the quality of support services, such as the outreach of academic and career advising services, and augment the program with tools to enhance its standing among post-baccalaureate pre-medical programs throughout New York City. Hunter's tuition in this program is far less than those at comparable programs in schools such as NYU and Columbia. The college will continue to administer financial assistance to help students with the completion of their studies. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3A. Uh, happy to second that. Are there questions on the item for the committee? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, 3A carries. Mr. Chairman, there were two uh, so-called walk-on resolutions brought forward for consideration by the committee. The first one is listed as calendar item 3B. 
is a resolution requesting that the, studi the City University of New York adopt a schedule of academic excellence fees for students in the Master of Science and Accounting program in the School of Arts and Sciences at Hunter College, effective with the fall 2013 semester as follows. Okay. Uh, they are the same as they were, uh, Mr. Chairman, in the, uh, the other, uh, the, uh, in item 3A. 500 per semester for full-time, $50 uh, per credit for part-time, and $90 uh, per credit. Thank you. Um, excuse me, um, Mr. Secretary, may I have, I'm missing a page here. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Since its inception in 2006, the Master in Science and Accounting program has grown and has over 100 active students. The demand for the program continues to be strong as ever, more potential, as, more as more potential employers look for students who have fulfilled the CPA education requirement. The additional funding will be used to improve and augment the program with technology skills expanded access to research databases and digital tools, research workshops, and career development, including networking events. The college will continue to administer financial aid to assist students with the completion of their studies. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3B. I'll second that. Are there questions for the committee on 3B? If not, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Abstentions? 3B carries. Uh, the second walk-on resolution listed as calendar item 3C <coughs> is a resolution <coughs> requesting that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York authorize the General Counsel to execute a university-wide contract with New York 3Rs Association, NY3R, for the delivery of CUNY library materials. NY3Rs, on behalf of its members, including CUNY and SUNY, procured the services of Velocity Express LLC pursuant, pursuant to a public solicitation process to provide library material delivery services. CUNY shall expend an amount not to exceed $805,000 during, during the potential seven-year contract payable in seven annual installments and chargeable to the central office. The Office of Library, Central Office, Office of Library Services. The university will have the right to terminate the contract at any time in its best interest. NY3Rs is a not-for-profit 503C corporation that receives funding from New York State to provide a range of important library services uh, and programs. SUNY has entered into a similar contract for these services at comparable rates. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3C. I'm happy to second that. Are there questions on item 3C? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? 3C is adopted. Chairman, following the approval of items 3A, 3B, and 3C, the Subcommittee on Investment was convened. After approval of the minutes of the meeting of the Subcommittee of February 4, 2013, and an investment update by Chief Investment Officer Janet Crone on the university's portfolio performance through February 28, 2013. There followed deliberations on spending for fiscal year 2014. Following these discussions, the meeting was adjourned to go into executive session for a briefing on recommended changes to the university's investment policy guidelines. After resuming the public meeting, the subcommittee approved the fiscal year 2014 spending rate for the CUNY investment pool, as well as an amended as well as the amended investment policy guidelines. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn next to the uh, Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. I'd like to call on uh, Trustee Valerie Beal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will now present for the Board's approval the items that the Committee for Faculty, Staff, and Administration considered at its meeting on April 8th. Please be advised that a matter came to our attention after our meeting that we believe the board should consider today, which has been added to the calendar. Another item that we reviewed at our meeting has been removed from today's revised calendar, which I would like to clarify. As the chancellor reported earlier, on February, April, on, on Friday, April 26, the vice chancellor Pamela Silversblatt reached an agreement with the Professional Staff Congress 
on a phased retirement program to allow tenured faculty age 65 and older to phase into retirement. The negotiated agreement renders the board's consideration of a pre-retirement leave with partial pay policy unnecessary. I will now continue with the report. Item 4A amends the governance plan of the City College of New York to provide the chair of the faculty committee on personnel matters and the chair of the executive committee on faculty senate with voting rights on the review committee which is the college-wide personnel and budget committee and the highest level committee involved in making recommendations on personnel matters. To ensure faculty representation on the review committee, the non-voting sta status of the faculty representatives will be changed to voting status. Mr. Chair, I present item 4A for the board's approval. I'll second that. <clears throat> Are there questions for the committee on 4A? Uh, if not, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, 4A is adopted. Thank you. Items 4B through 4H involve naming opportunities at a number of our colleges, which I will present as a group. <clears throat> I would like to note that the monetary gifts associated with these matters total $5 million. The Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration is pleased to recommend their approval. They are as follows. The William Coeger Deanship in the Zicklin School of Business at Baruch College. The Ann Spitzer Reading Room at Hunter College. The Dr. Stowe Whitman Hausner Study Room at Hunter College High School. The Barry Commoner Center for Biology of Natural Systems at Queens College. And the Hamill Family Classroom the Gregory and Diana Costner Reference Desk, and the Solomon Slatkin Classroom at the CUNY School of Law. Mr. Chair, I present items 4B through 4H for the board's approval. I will second those. Are there any questions for the committee on those items? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Those items are adopted. The following matter came in too late for review at our April 8th meeting, but is of time-sensitive nature and so is being brought directly before the board for consideration. Please refer to the added item in the calendar. Item 4I creates a new institutional title called Professor of Military Science. The university is working with the United States Army to establish a Senior Reserve Officers Training Corps. SROTC to be based at City College. The Army does not allow its employees to be compensated by an academic institution, but wants the senior commission officer assigned to the SROTC to have the title of professor. In order to meet the Army's requirements, the new institutional staff title call Professor of, I'm sorry, the new instructional staff title called Professor of Military Science will be established as a non-tenure track title and will not have any compensation or employment status with the university. Creation of this new title requires an amendment to section 6.1 of the bylaws of the Board of Trustees. We are also asking that the board waive the notice of amendment requirements in section 5.1 of the bylaws. Mr. Chair, I present item 4.1 for the board's approval. I'll second uh, item 4.I. Uh, are there questions on this bylaw change or the waiver? <clears throat> if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, that item is adopted. And finally, Mr. Chair, just a point of um, privilege. With regard to the Medgar Ever uh, College search, I'd just like to say for those of us who have been involved in presidential searches over the last decade, um, I can just say that as a result of um, Chancellor Goldstein's leadership and what this university has done, the pool of candidates that we're seeing now is just is wonderful and deep. And it's a real tribute to everyone in this room as to the quality and uh, the depth of candidates that we're now seeing in these presidential searches. So it's a pleasure to serve, and I look forward to continuing the search and completing it in June. Thank you. 
Uh, any further items to report? No, that concludes my Thank report. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn next to the Committee on Academic uh, Progr Policy Programs and Research. I'd like to call on uh, a Trustee Wellington Chen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At its uh, April 8, 2013 meeting, the committee approved the following policy matters. Calendar number item 5A, resolution to establish the CUNY Institute for Computer Simulation, Scholastic Modeling and Optimization at Hunter College. The work of this institute will involve multiple academic disciplines, mathematics, computer science, business, and engineering. The institute will conduct a variety of research uh, projects dealing with computer simulation, stochastic modeling, and optimization. This research will be of direct benefit to government and private industry. The research projects will be conducted involving students at all levels, from undergraduate freshmen to postgraduate students. Calendar number 5B. Resolution to confer honorary degrees at Baruch College, Brooklyn College, City College, College of Staten Island, The Graduate School, Hunter College, John Jay College, Lehman College, Macaulay Honors College, and Queens College. Baruch College wishes to confer an honorary degree of Doctor of Letters degree upon Gillian Tett, book author and award-winning journalist of the Financial Times and an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree upon General Wesley Clark, retired general of the U.S. Army. Brooklyn College wishes to confer an honorary degree of Fine Arts degree upon Kate Rothko Pritzel, Brooklyn College class of 1973, physician and champion of the arts. <coughs> City College wishes to confer an honorary degree, an honorary Doctor of Science degree upon Martin Cohen, Q CCNY class of 1970 co-chairman and co-CEO of Cohen and Steers, Inc., and chair of the City College 21st Century Foundation. City College also wishes to confer a Doctor of Humane Letters degree upon Mo Yan, a Chinese novelist and 2012 novel, Nobel laureate in literature. The College of Staten Island wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree upon both Elizabeth Dubowski, it is executive director of the Staten Island Foundation and Toyin Falola, a scholar of African history. The college also wishes to confer an honorary doctor of science degree upon Francis Allen, a scholar, a scholar in the field of computer science. The graduate school wishes to confer an honorary doctor of humane letter degree upon Robert Wilson, an avant-garde theater director and playwright. Hunter College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Fine Arts degree upon Anne Pasternak, President and Artistic Director of Creative Time. John Jay College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Laws degree upon both Peter Newfield and Barry Shack, who are co-directors of the Innocence Project. Lehman College wishes to confer an honorary degree, honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree upon both Francis uh, Binky, President of Natural Resource Defense Council, thank you, and Fernando A. Pico, a historian of Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. The Macaulay Honors College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree upon Virginia Slaughter, Slaughter, philanthropist and higher education advocate, and upon Reynold Levy, President of Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. Queens College wishes to confer an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree upon Diane Ravitch, Research Professor of Education at New York University and Historian of Education. Item number 5A and 5B were both approved by the committee and I recommend their approval by the board. I'm happy to second those items. Are there questions on them uh, for the committee? Comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Those items are adopted. Information items. Dr. Lowe gave an update on three items. First, students are currently registering for Common Core courses that have been approved as part of new general education framework, which is itself a part of Pathways Initiative to smooth credit transfer among the CUNY campuses. The colleges are also modifying some of their degree programs to comply with Pathways. The Pathways Initiative will be in full effect by fall 2013, as required by the June 2011 Board of Trustees Resolution. Second, a team of faculty and administrators at Mega Evers College 
along with colleagues from the Central Office of Academic Affairs and two outside consultants are working on a monitoring report required for Megas Evers by the Middle States Association due to Middle States having placed the college on warning. This is a, this is every expectation, there's every expectation that the monitoring report will be of, of the highest quality. Third, Dr. Lowe announced that the Office of Academic Affairs, along with other CUNY administrative offices, has successfully moved to its new location on East 42nd Street. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn next to the uh, Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs. I'd like to call on Trustee <coughs> uh, Kate Basile. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs has one item for the Board's approval. The Committee met on April 8th, 2013 and approved calendar item number six. Calendar item six, John Jay College of Criminal Justice, student activity fee increase. The student activity fee schedule represents an increase of $50 for full-time undergraduate students, $40 for part-time undergraduate students, and $30 for graduate students. The proposal increases are designed to build a comprehensive student activities program with additional funding for student involvement through the student government, student clubs, and several departments in student affairs to support the, the student engagement. This is the first student activity fee at the college since 1988. In accordance with board bylaws, section 16.2, 16 a referendum was held in conjunction with student government elections on March 11th through the 14th of 2013. The vote on the referendum was 995 in favor and 617 opposed, with an 11% of the eligible student body voting. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item number six. Um, do you need a, a motion to adopt the, the increased fee? Yes. I'll second it. Questions for the committee? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, uh, that's adopted. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I have a, an informational item, if I may. I would like to share this with the board. At the annual Somos el Futuro conference in Albany last month, students from the Ernesto Malave Leadership Academy were recognized for their outstanding service in the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy with citations from the New York State Assembly at an awards luncheon. The citations were presented by Assembly Member Felix Ortiz. Additionally, 20 students from the Malave Leadership Academy's CUNY Corps recently returned from their alternative spring break in Syracuse, New York, where they partnered with Habitat for Humanity to rebuild a home for a family in need. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn next to the Committee uh, on Facilities Planning and Management. I'd like to call on Trustee uh, Frieda Foster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The following resolution came in too late for prior review at the Board, uh, Board of Trustees Committee on Facilities Planning and Management meeting scheduled for April 8th. Therefore, it is being brought to the Board of Trustees for consideration tonight. It is a lease renewal and agreement at 111 Washington Avenue in Albany, New York on behalf of the Central Administration. This resolution will approve the execution of, fi of a five-year lease renewal for approximately 2,206 rentable square feet of space at 111 Washington Avenue. The university's Office of Government Relations has used this office space since July 1st, 1986 when conducting official business in Albany. The current lease agreement will expire on June 30th, 2013, and the new agreement will extend the lease for the, an additional five-year period. I hereby request your approval of this calendar item. I'll second that motion. Are there questions on the lease? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That item is adopted. Thank you. That concludes my report. Um, I'd like to provide the board with uh, an information uh, item which requires no vote, but the, uh, the uh, executive committee met on April 23, 2013 uh, to consider three items recommended by the chancellor, uh, which the committee unanimously determined uh, that it would be detrimental to the university to delay their advancement. 
You'll find these actions taken as uh, items 8A, B, and C. Uh, they are laid out for you starting on page 12 uh, of your uh, board calendar uh, books. Uh, we will now vote uh, on the resolutions which we discussed uh, in executive sessions, uh, which are available uh, around the table. I will present and move these resolutions. Uh, resolve that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve the appointment of Dr. Stuart Sutz as interim president of Kingsborough Community College, effective September 1, 2013, at a compensation to be recommended by the Chancellor to the Board, subject to uh, financial ability. Uh, Dr. Regina Perugi will step down as president of Kingsborough, effective August 31, 2013. Pending a completion of a search for a new president, uh, Dr. Stewart Such uh, would serve as interim president. He previously served as interim president uh, in, from December 19, 2011 to March 12, 2012, and he currently serves as the college's uh, provost. We deem him highly qualified uh, for this position. May I have a second on the resolution? Second. Are there any comments or questions? Uh, if not, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? All right, that is uh, carried. Second, um, I, is the second resolution I want to uh, recommend the approval of. Resolve that the Board of Trustees appoints Dr. Chase Robinson as interim president of the Graduate School and University Center, effective July 1, 2013, at a salary to be determined uh, by the board. Uh, uh, as you know, the board has, has appointed uh, Dr. William Kelly as interim chancellor, uh, and now appoints Dr. Robinson uh, as interim president of the Graduate School during the period uh, that Dr. Kelly serves as the interim chancellor and is on leave. Uh, from his position as president uh, of the graduate school. Since August 2008, Dr. Robinson has served as uh, provost of the graduate school, where he is also a distinguished uh, professor of history. Uh, he is the leading expert of his generation on early Islamic uh, history. May I have a second? second? Are there any questions or comments about the resolution? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. Oh, uh, I have one other resolution uh, for the board. Uh, it would involve the approval of uh, SOC scholarships as laid out on page uh, 13 uh, of your board books uh, to uh, uh, a number of uh, graduates whose uh, whose uh, names and institutions you'll find on page uh, 13. May I have a second for this SOC scholarships? Second. Questions on it? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Are there any opposed? Abstentions? Those SOC uh, scholarships uh, are adopted, are approved. Uh, that concludes the public uh, business for this meeting, uh, which I hereby declare adjourned. Finally, let me uh, <laughs> okay. uh, finally, on behalf of the board, let me thank our chancellor uh, and express our collective gratitude for your willingness to continue to serve the university uh, as uh, Chancellor Emeritus after your retirement. Uh, thank you very much. That concludes the meeting.